Imagine a trial where the accused can't speak, because he's been dead for months. That's the Cadaver Synod, and we're exploring it today. Let's go back to the end of the 9th century, a time filled with political chaos and religious conflict. Even the papacy, the top authority of the Roman Catholic Church, was caught up in these troubled times. Pope Stephen VI was a key figure during this period, and his controversial actions made him notoriously famous in church history. In a shocking move that amazed the world, Stephen VI dug up his predecessor, Pope Formosus, and put his body on trial. In this strange and unsettling event, a dead body was actually the accused in court. This spectacle deeply affected not only the religious community but also others far and wide. This event is known as the Cadaver Synod, and it's so strange it sounds more like something from a gothic novel than real history. Get ready as we explore the bizarre and grim details of this episode from the past. Before we get into the details of the trial, let's first learn about the main person involved, Pope Formosus. Born in Rome around 816 AD, Formosus was a well-respected figure in the church who became the Pope in 891 AD. His time as Pope, however, was filled with controversy. Formosus made decisions that upset many, particularly because of his role in the complicated and constantly changing political alliances in Italy and Europe. His most notorious act was crowning Arnulf of Carinthia as the Holy Roman Emperor, a decision that greatly disturbed many people in the church. His actions were viewed as overreaching, and as a result, his influence and authority as Pope were called into question. This tension, along with the political dynamics of the era, laid the groundwork for the extraordinary events that followed his death. Formosus died in 896 AD, but he couldn't have known that his passing was just the beginning, not the end, of his story. Jumping ahead to 897 AD, Pope Stephen VI makes an unimaginable move. In a shocking and horrifying event, the Cadaver Synod began. Pope Stephen VI, out of political revenge, dug up his predecessor, Pope Formosus, from his grave. He dressed the corpse in the elaborate papal robes, symbols of a past era. Then, in an act that went against all norms of respect, he put the lifeless body on trial. The accusations against Formosus were serious. He was charged with lying under oath, illegally becoming Pope and breaking church rules. The once respected Pope was now just a tool in a grim power struggle. The courtroom full of shocked onlookers saw the decaying body placed on a throne, a horrifying sight in this trial of the deceased. The bizarre scene didn't stop there. The defence for Formosus was like a puppet show. A deacon was chosen to speak for the corpse, moving its lifeless lips in a weak effort to imitate a defence. This was a travesty of justice that could only lead to one conclusion. The grim event ended with Formosus being declared guilty, his time as Pope invalidated, and his body thrown into the Tiber River. This shocking trial remains a dark part of Catholic Church history, serving as a stark reminder of the extremes people might reach for power. The Cadaver Synod, as shocking as it was, left a lasting impact on the church and history. Following the event, there was a storm of public anger. The people of Rome, appalled by the gruesome display, revolted, which led to the arrest and eventual death of Pope Stephen VI. His fall from power was quick and harsh, serving as a clear example of how unstable power can be. However, the Synod's effects rippled far beyond Stephen's downfall. This grim incident resulted in a major change in church laws. The Lateran Council of 897, held less than a year after the Synod, introduced a rule that banned the trial of the dead. This ensured that the deceased could rest in peace, safe from the risk of being tried after death. The Cadaver Synod has also found its place in popular culture. The event has been the subject of numerous books, plays, and even a heavy metal song. It continues to fascinate and horrify a gruesome spectacle that still captivates the public imagination. The Synod's legacy is a complex one. It is remembered as a time of insanity, a clear example of the risks of unchecked power and personal grudges. Yet, it also led to significant reforms within the Church, reforms that continue to shape the way the Church operates to this day. Though more than a thousand years have passed, the Cadaver Synod serves as a sobering reminder of the lengths to which power and vengeance can drive individuals.